Hey, what's happening, guys? I have here my old faithful transistor tester. You guys have all seen these in you know, a bunch of different forms. You put a component in here, you press a button, you get a reading. Right? Yeah, you know, it's pretty simple. You take, here's a 10K resistor. Just like that, and it tells you what you're getting. 9826, yeah, close enough to 10K for government work. Unless you're working for NASA. <laughs> this has been my standby, I like it. I use it all the time. These are like 10 bucks, and in my opinion, you know, a must have for the home electronic shop. Well, I got me a new one. Why? Only because it's prettier. So this is the new one, and this one is from Druck. I have a lot of stuff from Druck. Now, I bought this myself. They didn't send it to me. I just wanted to give you the link there in case you're interested. And this um, zip socket pops out so you can actually you know, just stick your components in there. But it comes with a case, although it doesn't want to fit real well. I did find it somewhat interesting that there's a Transformers logo in there. I guess you could say this transistor tester is more than meets the eye. Wah, wah, wah. All right, so says automatic identification of transistors, diodes, dual diode, MOS, SCR, resistors, inductors, capacitors, and it reads capacitor ESR. This does not do ESR. So, I figure we give it a couple shots, right? I have a selection of goodies here for us to test. Oh, and it's color. So, that makes it pretty, right? Okay. So here's our, our our 10K resistor. What did we get, like 9826 off the other one? Let's see what this one tells us. Other than my battery's empty. Eh, crap. So where were we? We were putting this 10K resistor in here we get our little transformers face and 9826 9911 well now that's a little bit different this also has a nice little timer and of course like I said it's in color now here is a more precision 10k resistor We'll plug it in here and see if we can get a better reading. Oh, sorry about that. I had to cough. 10.11. I don't know how much better that is. I mean, it's a couple percentage points, but there's no difference. It reads it well enough. That's the point, right? So, resistors. How about capacitors? Let's start with uh, a very small ceramic capacitor. I think this is like 10,000 picofarads maybe? I'm not sure, I don't remember. Transformers. What do we get? What do we get? Oh, 10 nanofarads. Okay. Now, I don't see an ESR, but it might not be able to read it on these tiny ones. Let's try a bit bigger one. This is also a ceramic capacitor, but this is a multi-layer ceramic capacitor. And, okay, we got ESR of 0 0.7 ohm. This is the one that was uh, 10,000 nano. Okay. And then something a little meatier. This is a 10 micro. 
which you know if you're paying attention All right gotcha okay let's discharge it and see what she has to say for herself Hmm, ESR 1.4 ohm. Okay. Tiny bit higher than I'd like, but absolutely acceptable. Now, there's going to be some things that this cannot read. For instance, here is a uh, 7805 voltage regulator. It's not going to know what to do with a voltage regulator. Yep. And I totally expected that. Now here is a MOSFET. It should have no trouble with the MOSFET. This is an NPN. Yeah. End channel enhancement mode MOSFET 123 gate drain source with a capacitance of 2.82 nanofarad. Easy. Easy peasy. Now I believe this is a PNP BJT. I mean, these are just simple things. It should have no trouble reading these. But what makes this nice is, if you don't want to go through and look up what you're dealing with, you can just plug them in here. And you know, because you say you're working on a project and you need a BJT, and you're like, oh, I wonder what this one is. Okay, well now you know. This is a uh, PNP one two three or emitter base collector. The uh, amplification is two twenty nine and forward voltage of 0.631 millivolts. I mean, perfect. Here is an NPN. Again, should have no trouble whatsoever in reading this. Here comes a train. Yep, no problems. Alright, now if we want to get a little bit stumpy for it, how about a JFET? I haven't tested this, so I don't know what it's going to do with the JFET. BJT NPN, okay, yeah. One, two, three emitter base collector, HFE of 14 voltage, 4 to 615 millivolts. And now you can see a one. Here's our emitter down here. Here's our collector up here. Here's our base. And then there's our junction diode. So that's an NPN BJT, very nice. I think I have another one. Yeah, here's another JFET. This one is a, um, maybe that's not a JFET, oh, but I think it is. Can't really read what's on it. Yeah, it's another JFET, NPN JFET, no problems. Now, it also says on here, that it will read an SCR, silicone controlled rectifier, also known as a thyristor. Thyristor. I happen to have one of those here. Let's see what it can do with this. Well, that's sad. There's no picture. Oh, disappointing. I was so hoping for a picture. It says it reads inductors. Uh, this should be a 10 micro Henry, maybe. It's very early in the morning, so. Yes, 10 micro Henry, resistance of 10.3, and it's a snake. Now, here is a. Uh, an inductor I wound for a radio project. And I think this one, oh, excuse me. I think this one is like 0.1 micro Henry. Point oh one, holy chameleons. Point oh one micro Henry with no resistance. Yeah, basically, that's just some wire. <laughs> ah, diodes. Here's a Schottky. 
Let's put the uh, anode in pin one and the cathode in pin three. Now see those legs are a little bit big to fit in there, so that makes it nice to have this ziff socket that we can plug in because that allows for you to have parts of varying thickness and we test transformers who can it be now aha it's a diode it knows does it know it backwards? It should. There shouldn't be any surprises here. Yep. Now that was a shot key. Here is a, um, it's like I think this is one in 4007, so this is a uh, silicon junction diode. Yep. 0.66. I think we've tested enough stuff here that we can tell it sort of kind of knows what it's doing. <laughs> like me, only sort of kind of. But sometimes that's all you need. So, next logical step is to take it apart. Yes, I know, I know. Kangaroo Dave would have taken it apart first. Well, I'm not Kangaroo Dave. I used to play with things and see how they work and how they're going to function before I take them apart. Tight. I'll be back when I get the screws out. All right, we're down to the last screw, so we'll get out the old blade here and... See if we can't expose the screw hole. <laughs> it's funny they put that sticker on there like it's calibrated. Yeah. In what, the Egg Fu Young Calibration Lab of Shenzhen, China? What accuracy did you calibrate it? Six egg rolls? I'm sorry, I know that's culturally insensitive. <laughs> but so am I. Okay. So, what have we here? Fish 8840 dot taobao dot com ck411528 so we've got a somewhat sketchy solder job here I'll tell you what let's get the uh, the, the uh, microscope out so we can uh, really look in there nice alright so we got the micro mic I don't want to, want to call it a microphone it is a microscope it's uh a boost the brightness up that help you guys any so right here we're looking at the brains of the operation and I don't know if you guys can read what it says but I can and it says Atmel Mega 328p it's Arduino powered there's an 8 megahertz crystal There's that sketchy soldering job on the uh, LCD connector. Got some capacitors. Now, take a look at the value of those capacitors. You guys can read those values, right? All right, I want somebody down in the uh, comments to tell me why there's those three values there. And we've got a, uh, a voltage regulator. Looks like a transistor. A couple more transistors. 
Another volt. This thing's got a lot of voltage regulators. There's the 78L05. Yeah. Not too much going on there. Powered by Arduino. There she is. Back together. Hopefully in working order. That's always the goal when we take things apart. To put them back together so they work once again. Anyway, like I said, this was like 15 or 16 bucks. I will uh, definitely put it in my Amazon store. It has now replaced this as my go-to. Although this is still, you know, half the price of this. Eh, what do you want? Cheap and functional. We're still relatively low cost, but prettier. Up to you. Of course, you don't have to have any of them. I've done some videos showing you how you can test transistors using uh, nothing more than a multimeter. But it's always nice to have new toys to look at and play with. So that's where we're at. And I want to thank you guys for your uh, thoughts and warm wishes for my mom. She had um, the first of, well, hopefully it'll be the only surgery on Wednesday and is recovering in a skilled care facility for 10 days and then they will reevaluate and uh, hopefully we'll get her home for Christmas. I hope you keep her in your prayers. Like I said, I appreciate it very much. I also appreciate you watching my videos and commenting and sharing and you know, all that good stuff. All right, that's it. I'm out. Peace.